Okay, welcome to the new episode of Working Out the Kinks, the podcast. You're here with Tosh Dadula and my really good friend, Anthony Hill. He's going to take a moment and tell you guys a little bit about himself. What's up, y'all? This is Anthony Hale. I'm an artist, recording artist, graphic designer, independent. I keep saying artist. What is wrong with me? <laughs> I mean, I think the people should know how good of an artist you are, so it's fine. <laughs> yes, I record music, I mix, I master. I shoot videos, I edit, I do graphics, that whole jazz, all self-taught, by the way, so I'm very happy to be here with my grub, and we're doing this thing. Right, so today, this episode is really going to be about stepping out on faith and following your dreams. Um, I know this podcast is definitely uh, streamlined to people who are dealing with uh anything in their life, whether it's pregnancy, which since I am a doula, uh, whether it's relationships, but I think it's really important to also focus on different things in our lives in general. And I think just following your dreams is such a big one. Um, I mean, I'm currently doing it right now, uh, which I don't think you know, but um, my goal for 2022 was the year of breaking fear. And okay. yeah, and it's a big one for me because um, I've kind of put out the idea of doing a podcast uh, for like a full year. You know, I kept going, oh, I'm going to do it. Oh, I'm going to do it. Oh, I'm going to wait in three more months. Oh, and I mean, my husband actually bought me these microphones as a birthday gift. Um, just to kind of set me up and just go, hey, you said you're going to do it. Here you go. Right. Go on and do it. And now I'm doing it. Girl, so. you got an A1 husband for real, for real. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very, very much. <laughs> but uh, a little bit about even your background and um Starting off as an artist, as an mm-hmm. independent artist, who mm-hmm. actually dropped his album. So if y'all don't know, you know now, go cop it. Yes, my debut album, Rebel, is out. And that took a minute. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that took a minute. Um, With that first album, it literally took me four years to complete because I kept going back and scrapping it because there was a lot of things happening at once that mm-hmm. was trying to hinder me from actually putting it out. So... I'm very thankful for the pandemic. Like, I know it was a lot to deal with, trust me. But I'm very thankful for the pandemic because it was able to get me to sit down and focus and finish. And once I finished it, I was just like, okay, I'll just put it out now. (laughs) I ain't ain't have no rollout. I ain't have no special way of like, okay, this special day, it's coming, y'all. Go get it. It was more like, upload. (laughs) So basically, you pulled a Beyonce then. Mm-hmm. You just dropped it. Yeah, I just dropped it. <laughs> and then people like, you ain't let nobody know. I was like, I, I, you know now. You like, know now. <laughs> <laughs> but it was it was perceived well. Like I wasn't expecting it to like you know reach people, especially my faves. Mm. So I just thought you know, hey, I finally finished something that I always wanted to do, which was put out my album. Now I'm working on my second one, so I can't wait for that. Um, but yeah, it's it took me oof four years scrapping it three times, going back and rewriting some things because I was in a different mode then. This album went through a whole transformation of like just me trying to find myself musically. Mm-hmm. So that's why you hear so many different sounds in it that people are like, "Where are you going with this? Like, what is this?" Yeah, because I definitely noticed like a, a New Orleans feel to it. Mm-hmm. I definitely noticed that. <laughs> I love this city so much. I really do. Um, New Orleans um, is the place that I've experienced a lot, like a growth and understanding within myself as an artist, as well as a person, too, because I met so many wonderful people here. I love New Orleans bounce music. <laughs> I really do. So, and let me just go here on the record to say this. I'm not a bounce artist. No. I'm not a bounce artist. That's that's not my lane. I leave that to the big Fridas of the world and all of them because they they the one that pioneered that. Katie Red, um, Kitty Black, Black. Yeah, yes, the girls. Um, Sissy no. <laughs> yes. So everybody like I listen to them and I've always been familiar with the sound. Always have living in Mississippi. Of course, I had right. to. But it was a difference when I actually come here and I've experienced the city in a different way 
possible than people may think. Because I've been hearing a lot when people say this city is like weird and crazy. I'm like, it's a city. First of all, it was the first city I ever went to that played music damn near on every corner. Yeah. That excited me. Like, that made me happy. And I got a chance to check out Peaches Records. I always oh, wanted to Peaches. go there. Oh, my gosh. Met the owner. She was real sweet to me. Came there on my 21st birthday. And I just talked with her and everything like that. And I was like, yeah, one day... I was about to say something great. Like, one day my shit gonna be in here. It's gonna <laughs> be in here. And I'm hopefully it's gonna happen. It ain't happened yet, but I'm having hope for it. I mean, it. these are the goals and these are the things that we manifest. So yes. Okay. Yes, Speak of course. It. And then I knew that because I love the sound of New Orleans bounce music, I wanted to try it to see what I can do with it. Because mm-hmm. I noticed that a lot of people were taking elements of it and using it for their music. And then not giving credit where credit is due. Right. We know who you are. We're not going to call nobody out, but you know who you are. <laughs> <laughs> Period. Uh, yes. But um, I've always, you know, listed off like Big Frida as one of my inspirations. Um, Don Bouchard, Will I Am. I was a big Black Eyed Peas fan. <laughs> they couldn't tell me nothing. <laughs> um, Todrick Hall, like, they showed me, like, this is who I am, Nicki Minaj, all of that. They, that showed me I, th- who I am as an artist because I was able to see myself in each one of them and be like, okay, that's me. I could take pieces from here, pieces from here, pieces from here, make a whole little gumbo pot of my own and really just, you know, put it out to the world and see how it would be received so i think it's being received pretty well yes and it still shocks me i don't know why i'm like why am i not like grasping that people like the things that i put out because i mean i'm not used to hearing that people like stuff for me so i think it goes back to what we were talking about even before we started uh this episode which it goes back to confidence and believing Mm, in oneself you're right about that you know I think even like yeah. on your album, don't you have an interlude? Yes. Where you talk about fear? Yes. Okay. Ooh, girl, you do your research. I have to do my research. So there's an interlude on, it was actually the expanded version of the album. I just put out a little quick little EP of extra songs that I wanted to just re release just because. Mm-hmm. And I um, had this interlude where I was talking to a friend of mine and I was telling her, like, like I don't know why I have so much confidence with talking to women um, about how beautiful they are and how amazing they inspire me and they keep me going but when it comes to a guy that I really want to be with or like it's hard for me to say I like you I want to be with you can we make this happen I was like where is the disconnect (laughs) Um, it's the fear of rejection and fear of rejection is very very hard to deal with rejection is very hard um you know, and I have to be—I have to be honest. As a woman, um, I have been rejected a few times. Child, please. They're lost. I don't care. But very, <laughs> but but I have, and, and it hurts. And you go, ow, oh, okay. And then you right. Keep, but, you, but you keep moving. You grow from it, and you move on. Because baby, the rejections I received, honey, I wrote about them. <laughs> Thank you to the ones who broke my heart. Thank you. Because I I really did that. Like I I would literally sit back. I'm like, oh my god, thank you. I made some great music out of this. <laughs> <laughs> like my song X. I don't know why everybody liked that so much. Like, it's just me talking smack about my exes. It ain't nothing. I wouldn't even say talking smack. It was just me detailing, like, what happened. What, why, where my mind was at the time. <sighs> Girl. <laughs> I've been through some things. Um, But, yeah, to circle back to the music side of it. I love New Orleans. I love New Orleans bounce music. I like the culture because it's literally a gumbo, a melting pot of things you can just do out here. So every time I'm out here, I always have a good time. People can't tell me nothing about this city. I know. I know. It's it's such a love-hate situation with this city because I, I love my city. Mm-hmm. I'm born and raised here. I, I know so many. You know, it, it's such a love, love, hate thing because you see some of the not so great things right however i think what keeps me going and what i keep in mind is that there's not so great things in every city very true in, in a lot of big cities so, oh trust you know it just <laughs> it just shows you you know what the media decides what they want to portray and what they don't want to portray correct you know so i think that's just 
all that kind of boils down to it right and you talking to a Biloxi Mississippi boy so <laughs> trust me like I love my city too but I've I've grown up there and known like okay all right let me go ahead and start like an hour and 20 minutes away from here and let me see what it do for me and it's been working so not to say I don't love my hometown I do like I really do but I love coming over here I think, all I the think time Biloxi just might just be a, a, just a little too quiet Maybe that's what it is. You know? No, it is not. It is Little Vegas, girl. Is it? It is Little Vegas. They literally call it that because of all the casinos that line the coast. Oh, you're right. I didn't even think about that. People come through there like crazy. So, and it's the beach. And, like, first of all, the food is great. Yes. I can say that because I'm from there. But still, it's it's for real. Um, The food is great. The establishments are cool. Like, and I just had the same experience with you, like, with you about the city. It's like, it's a love-hate thing. I'm from here, so I know it. But I come here to New Orleans and be like, oh, wow, I love this. I love this. I love it. I'm at, like, I don't, I act like I don't go nowhere. <laughs> Look, I'm going to keep it a buck. I get to Mississippi and I drive right past it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I understand. I understand. And I feel like I should give it a fair shake. I just, if I ain't stopping for gas, I ain't stopping. <laughs> Listen, I understand. I would feel like if you was, if you were to come to Biloxi, you would like it simple because of the fact that you can do some things out there. And plus, you know, just for you know shits and giggles, just to see it and see if you like. Oh, okay, this is cool. All right. He wasn't lying about this and that. Now, don't get me wrong. It's not New Orleans. I can just say that right now. It is not that. But I do feel like it does have a value to the coast. Right. That a lot of people come back to. <sighs> right. <laughs> so since we're talking about stepping out on faith. Yes. Let's just get to that part of this session. Mm-hmm. So what did you do and how did you feel when you finally stepped out and decided, you know what, nine to five ain't my life. You know, don't get me wrong. We all have nine to five to keep Ooh. these bills going. <laughs> However, hello. <laughs> you know, we are people who wear many hats. Right. So what did you do and what did you, you know, how did you feel when you finally took that step? I have to think about it because it's a lot that goes yeah. into it. So I'm a... I can say this. It was a need for me to please my inner child. Mm -hmm. So I had to really go back and honor what I told myself as a child. I will release an album. I don't care how I release it. I'm going to release something. I'm going to love it and I'm going to let the world have it. And I guess that drive all those years of me trying to do this made me like, okay, it's really time now. And you have to do this because ain't no time than now. Ain't nobody doing nothing. You in your house with your thoughts, your feelings, and a pen. Write all of it down. Form it into a song. Find a beat that fits the song or that fits the way you feel about it. The emotions behind it. Yes. And put it out. My dad knew I had an album out. He didn't know like it was coming like that. So, and he didn't know he was on it. A lot of my family was on on the album. They didn't even know about it. Uh, like when I when Dawn put her album out, Second Line, and I heard the interludes with her mother, I was like, Oh, I know that's this right, girl. Is... I know that's right, girl. Like so that was I, I, I will say I love that on her album. The way she, the way that she Which, used I'm her sorry, mother. Pause. We're gonna shout out Miss Don Richard. Yes, so the that's queen. actually how we met. Uh, so, <laughs> as I say, I am a woman with many hats. I have my lot nine them. to five that pays my bills. Uh, I am a full time doula. Mm -hmm. I am an herbalist. I am a podcaster, and I also work for the one and only Miss Dawn Richard. Yes, she owns a beautiful little pop up called Papa Ted's mm -hmm. food truck, and uh, it is a vegan breakfast sandwich uh, that we do. Delicious, are delicious. I've my actually God. Um, started my vegan journey because of it, and I'm working really hard to keep that going. That's going to be another episode when we talk about eating for your health mm -hmm. and not just eating for feeling good and having emotions but that's a different episode right but, um <laughs> anywho we actually met through her yes. um, since i worked for her and um anthony just always came and you know chilled out with us and just danced with us and <laughs> you know just if it's it's not um it's not 
even like a, it doesn't feel like a real job because everybody's having so much fun yes. and everybody brings something different and you know that's why we decided to even hook up and do this because we met through her so mm-hmm. yay we love you look at, her, <laughs> look at her bringing us together girl yes yeah she's everything yeah she's my, she's one of my my inspirations in music and artistry and life because talking to her is like you just get so much gems from her like she's just as a business owner i get so much from her yes and it's just first of all it is a blessing to know your fave and to not only know them but they love you too so that's and such an honest and humble spirit very i mean she's been in the game for a minute and talk to you like you one of her homegirls she really do like it's crazy (laughs) When What's I, that little heel kick thing she be doing? I'm yeah. like, got the best heel kick in the game. Oh, do you call that little dance step, whatever? And, right. And, and just, I am a humble sandwich maker. Right. I'm like, what, girl? I'm like, sistrin. What? <laughs> sistrin. Yeah. Like, as, as a matter of fact, the funny thing about this, um, I met her mother before I met her Get out first. Of here. I didn't know that. Yes. So, let me give y'all a little tea because I can do that. Yes. We want the tea. So, Dawn was um, going to perform for Essence, Mm. right? Oh, yeah, I remember that. Yeah, in the lime green outfit. Yes. First of all, iconic. Killing it. Whole set. She had a, um, what's the opener for her? I forgot the name of the, um, I forgot the name of the tribe, and I don't know why. But it was a tribe that she had open for her. They was performing um, their native songs. They had the costumes. They had the whole it's set. It's on the tip of my tongue. I know it's just with a W. W, yes. Oh, man, it's killing me. I don't oh, want to say God. the wrong name, though, because I, I don't want to. I don't want to. Disrespect me. Right. Was I'm going to have to Google it. Watch your tongue. Was... Is it sound, maybe? Yeah. It, like, and I got clips, and I don't know why I can't, for the life of me, bring it to my tongue. But it's right there. Yeah, the Washington Nation. Washington Nation. Yes. yes. Shout out to them because they, they had the, it, the feeling of, you know, culture is just beautiful to me. So before that, it was the Essence Showcase. And I was there. It was, I think it was the New Orleans Jazz Market that they, they hosted it at. First of all, amazing venue. Beautiful venue. I met Tank from Tank and the Bangers. Hey, girl, how hey. you doing? I love you, boo. Took a picture with her. I met her mother. I'm like, okay. All the mamas. I'm meeting all the mamas, right. <laughs> so I was talking with another fan that I had um, a mutual respect for, who I still do because he's amazing. He's really sweet. Um, shout out to him. And I was telling him, like, you know, Dawn has really got me through, you know, life, you know, through with music and everything like that. She's really got me through. And he was like, well, you know her mother's right there, right? <laughs> huh? Excuse me? She was like, yeah, she's right there. And I turned over, and there's Miss Debbie sitting like the queen that she is, doing like this, just waving. I was like, you, you, you know me? <laughs> and she was like, baby, yeah, I know you. Because I, I forgot that I always saw the name. <laughs> <laughs> I always saw the name Deborah Richardson. Oh, Richardson, Jesus Christ, she forgive me, Richard. There we go. <laughs> I blame I blame that chick at I'm um, at Jazz Fest. I blame her, and I'm gonna stick with that. Uh, I'm gonna keep that to myself. Mm. But you know. But you know. <laughs> um, Deborah Richard kept coming up on my um, mentions, but I didn't put one or two together then. I just like you know people they like what i say i'm I'm amazing okay cool <laughs> and she was like yeah baby i know you and i the first thing she's ever told me was i love you because you love my baby oh that is so beautiful if i wasn't already drunk i would have been right there crying my eyes out like girl don't tell me that please like don't do it met the whole family the dad her brother his like his family everybody they were right there Love them to pieces. And every time I went and saw Dawn at a show, her mother would always somehow find me. <laughs> Literally. She would find me somewhere in the audience. I don't know how she does it. I don't know how, but she do. She gonna always look for her people. Oh, yeah. So, 
Miss Debbie, I love you. I love you. <laughs> Down. Because that woman right there, she supports. She's so supportive. She loves her people and she's going to support. And like every time I saw Dawn performing, I would see her mother. She would embrace me, give me a hug. I love you. I love you. Like, God's to. Then I met Dawn at the as um at the Essence Showcase. Split hot second. <laughs> Not too long, but she gave me a hug and it felt like my world was just shook. <laughs> like, oh my god, my baby hugged me. Ooh, I'm drunk. <laughs> <laughs> of course. I done got too many um too many drinks from the bar and I'm sitting there enjoying my moment because when they announced her name that she won I was the first one up screaming my ass off <gasps> like I was like and then they was like yeah we saw you on the live stream what live stream like what <laughs> man so many wonderful people that night wonderful people I love meeting people not only just meeting them but just understanding them what they bring, how they, what they offer to themselves as far as the world, like, oh, I'm an artist too, cool, yes, send me something, I want to hear, I want to see, I want to listen, that's how I am, like, I'm going to follow your Instagram, like, instantly, if I, if I feel you, like, energy-wise, I need your IG right now. Yeah, I think I give you mine, like, day one, <laughs> <Day what? laughs> I swear, I think it was day one. Yes, I said, I need it, I need it, like, now, because... To me, Instagram was a great way for me to, like, keep in touch with people. Because I don't want to be like, can I get your number? Like, because that's, to me, it's weird. Because I don't want, I mean, like... the you... world has changed. You know, we don't really look at phone numbers right. anymore. Like, we just yeah. It's, it's... That's another story. I mean, that is another <laughs> story, you know? Like, but the world has changed. Like, everything is done through social media. Yes. And I feel like that's the best way for me to look at somebody, like... Because I like seeing what... In, what other people's interests are mm -hmm. like what you like to eat what is your favorite music what are you doing like i like seeing what makes other people happy and it fuels me so that's why i be like let me get to ig right now <laughs> well, i think when you really think about it it's probably a good idea to do that because you get to see who they are as a person and not what they show you mm -hmm. you know because everybody put on a front when you first meet somebody right but you can't hide what you when you posting when yourself. you put yeah so then i'm like oh okay either it's like either it's a good okay or a, okay oh not okay so great of an, oh, you know and believe me i got quite a few of those oh okay okay i see what type of time you on so then i know not to bother yeah going further in our journey together very you know? but yeah Mrs. Richard is just everything. Father, Rich I call Mrs. Richard and Father Richard. I love saying that. <laughs> I, love, Mr. I Frank. love saying that. I need to start calling that man Mr. Frank. I keep calling him Father Richard. Like, I mean, I think he's okay with that. He hasn't <laughs> said anything. Right? Because I'm like, like, I just in my head they're like royalty. Like they are legit royal people to me. So meeting them is just like I'm being blessed. Because every time I leave them, I just feel energized. I feel great. They always tell me how much they love me and love what I'm doing. And because I hear that um, here and there, but it's like you don't feel it until somebody really show you like, no, we love what you do. It's okay. Embrace this. You know? So that's why I'm a hugger. I like to hug folks. I like to feel them because that's, the, that's to me. It's a transfer of energy. Yes. And I like to also let people know that you're okay with me. Like, you're comfortable with me. Because oftentimes, contrary to popular belief, I'm not always comfortable at all. Oh, no, I'm not. Because I'm always, like, worrying. And I'm always on edge because I have to be being a black gay man. Right. In the South. In the South. So... As much as I'm, as much as I know the streets that I am from or my my surroundings, I always got to be like, okay, where the exit's at? Where the exit's at? Oh, okay. There's a window. There's a door. Oh, okay. There's a pathway. There's an outside. As long as I know where those at, I'm fine. But because I'm always meeting y'all and I we meet at the same place, damn near every week. Every week, pretty much. <laughs> It was instantly comfortability. It was instantly felt because I know y'all. Mm -hmm. I know 
DJ Ali B. Hey girl, how you doing? Shout out to you. Love you. I know Q. I know, you know, Maddie, Nell, all of them. I know all of them. Right. So it just felt good instantly to know I'm with people that I know love me, supports me, and enjoys my company. I can relax. And I think we're some fierce ass women. Very. We oh my fierce God. Fierce ass women. So. Can I? T- <laughs> Let's talk about it. Look, first of all, first of all, yes, all the women I mentioned and more because I believe all women are queens. All women are everything. But is there something about a woman? Girl, I wish I was straight. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> I would. So, you know what? I'm not trying to you not know, downplay my identity because I am gay. But sometimes, like, in more ways, I do wish I was straight so I can appreciate y'all in a more vast way majority than I normally do I don't know I think to be quite honest I think the respect that you give is kind of perfect because you know it's one of those things when you know when I was like younger and I would go out Mm -hmm. a lot of times I would actually just go out to what they consider the gay side of bourbon Mm -hmm. because I felt like I can dance freely I felt safe I felt you know secure Mm -hmm. you know if the men told me that I looked beautiful it's because they actually felt it and wasn't trying to just like you know, oh, girl, you contact are. with me. You know, if, well, thank you very much. I do you appreciate are. it. When I first but, met you, girl, ooh, child, <laughs> your energy off you was just so, like, warm and just welcoming. Like, I literally could have cried when I went to the car. <laughs> <laughs> I'm for real. Like, shout out, first of all, shout outs to Shonda. Oh, my God, I love her. <sighs> Shonda, I know you're on a journey right now, and I love you for that. But I still want you to be my choreographer. I still want you to be my movement person because I love you, girl. <laughs> but no, I understand you do your thing. You you left your you left me to with good people, so I'm not gonna complain. So for those who don't know, Miss <laughs> Shonda Domingo Brown um, also is uh, the one featured in episode one. Yes, um, has a very wonderful history of being. Um, a choreographer and mm-hmm. also a personal trainer. Yes. She's on a wonderful journey um, as being a spiritual healer. A and she's, beautiful I, journey. And she's absolutely helped me with that as well. Um, we might have to do an episode on just our spiritual healing because that is something. Bro. Like, that, that, that is something beautiful. And I'm so happy she's on that journey. <laughs> hey, look, sidebar, sidebar. When, my, um, when my mother was in the hospital, mm. I called Shonda and asked her, could she pray for her? Because... Mm. To me, I felt like not that I felt like nobody else couldn't do that, mm. but it just felt right for her to do it because I knew not only would my mother get something out of it, I would have got something out of it as well. Mm-hmm. And it felt good to know that, okay, I could exhale. My mother's in good spirit. She's fine. And she's good. She's back at work. She's on her feet. She's doing her thing. Hey, girl, shout out to you. Uh, <laughs> yes. But back to Shonda, she really gave me the gift of comfortability. I used to always be on edge, but every time I worked with her, she was just reaffirming and always acknowledged me as the artist that I am and wanted me to know that. And she always gave me that that little look that you like, I'm proud of you. Like every little step you take is a moment and you should be proud of it. And I be trying to tell folks without trying to make them feel like I'm weird. But every time somebody make, like tells me something that hits me in the heart, I do feel like I want to cry. And it's because with my past history in life and growing up, it was a lot I had to deal with. So when I get to my grown age and hear these things, these wonderful praises and honors and love and, you know, support is not that it's not not that it's new to me, but it just feels like, <gasps> <sighs> like it's like a release of validation. Yeah, I want to say like perhaps it's just because I mean I don't know all your backstory, but mm-hmm. I'm assuming because you know we all have our own personal traumas in our lives. Yes, that sometimes put you in places of feeling self conscious, and that's the reason why I believe so many people don't want to step out on faith and do the things that make them happy mm-hmm. because you have so much in your in the back of your head like oh you can't do this oh you right. won't succeed and that's where that fear builds up mm-hmm. so when you finally find a way to let that go and honestly when you have 
the different people in your life to support you. Yes. When you have the Dawns and the Shondas and the Miss Debbies. I know that's right. These are the three three queens. queens, Three queens right there. (laughs) And they help you see what sometimes you can't see in yourself. Yes. That what makes you go, you know what? I can step out and do this. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's kind of why this podcast even happened. Like, yes, my husband definitely bought me these microphones. Hey, husband. And, hey, husband. But, <laughs> <laughs> but Shonda, I was talking to her one day and she was just like, so were we going to do that first episode? And she kind of, kind of stepped me up to go, hey, this is the date we're going to meet. You set a time, I'll be there and we're going to make it happen. Yes. So, you know, when you have those people in your corner that kind of help validate the feelings that you feel, that's how you're able to step out on that faith. And down to work with you. Right. Like, okay, let's do this. Bet. <laughs> I'm so used to people telling me no. Mm-hmm. And I'm so used to people telling me like, uh, I don't feel like that's good for me that I, I had built up a way like, okay, if it's not going to happen, I can do it myself. Like, it's not nothing. But coming here and then being like, everybody ready to work like, yeah, let's do this. Yeah, come on. When you when is the best time for you? Cause we ready. And I was like, okay, all right, okay. Um, so and I would plan them strategically so everybody's you know schedules aligned, and I make sure everybody was happy and secured. Shonda, Q, Maddie, I love my dancers. I really <laughs> do. And shout out to my other dancers too. My I don't know why I'm blanking right now, but I guess cause I'm full of emotion. Um, but the whole schooling talent team. I love y'all and I will be working with y'all again very soon because again <clears throat> my second album is coming out soon and I'm going to need some work um. <laughs> so I believe the names you may be looking for is at Ash the Kardash and yes. we have Mr. Brother Johnson right? yes Z first off uh, that Jazz Fest performance y'all did the damn thing girls you know Don gonna slay always I'm gonna always give Slays her her always. flowers I'm gonna always give her her flowers but whew. They pick the best people. And the, then to the me to be. When he dances yes. Beautiful. Got me trying to do choreography knowing good and well. I only know bits and pieces. And they say, we see you. I'm like. Oh, no, you were killing it. I was like watching my face. Let me try and get hit. When you did the airplane. I was like, all right. All right. Like, he knows It's just like. It's, I'm a fan first. I love good music. Mm. And it's one thing to be a fan, but it's another thing to be a fan and to know that person on a deeper level. To me, to know a person past one thing Mm. is a privilege. Mm. I always tell my little cousin, I always try to teach her, you know, what I didn't have. I'm giving you the knowledge so you can go and not worry about a lot of the things. You're going to have your own journey and feelings because she's a lesbian. But I wanted her to, like, know, like, it's a privilege to know you past just being your cousin. I know you as a friend. I know you as a daughter. I know you as um, even a, a romantic um, person because she talks to me about her her romantic feelings for somebody. And it'd be the most beautiful thing ever. Mm-hmm. And I tell her all the time, don't be afraid of it. Just let it happen. And then, trust me, I'm going to embarrass you regardless. I'm your cousin. I'm going to have to do that. <laughs> Shout out to Armenta. I love you, but you might be wrong. Uh, but, yeah, I, it's just me just loving. I got to do that. And I have to do that. Because I didn't receive that a lot that I felt like I needed it. I feel like the childhood is the most precious time and the most important time for a human's life to develop. So if you give, if you pour into a child and you constantly remind them that you're beautiful, you're wonderful, you're talented, you're an amazing gift to life, they won't get to their grown age like I am and cast the kind of debate whether, oh my God, are you for real? Quit playing with me. I wouldn't have to second guess that. Well, I feel... To be quite honest, there's a lot of us in our age group. And to be fair, this is a very big topic for me and my therapy because I am in therapy. Mm-hmm. Um, BT Dubs is also an episode that will be coming up soon. Um, hey. But, um, you know, one of the things that I had to work through and understand, which I am, I feel on the other side and accepting, is that my parents, you know, I have to give them credit where credit is due. They held it down the best they could. Yeah. You know, I think oh, my, my parents very. were super there. They were, mm-hmm. you know, they, they were loving, they were caring, mm-hmm. you know, they gave me the roof over our head, they, right. you know, they gave us maybe not every want, but definitely everything we needed, right. you know, so, and all that, just to say that sometimes I did not feel 
the emotional support that I needed. Right. So, you know, I can go to them about, you know, my grades, but I couldn't always go to them about my feelings because I wasn't sure that it would be supported. Right. And that's okay. Like, I'm to the point that I'm in a better space. That I understand that. I accept it. And, you know, I don't have anything bad in my heart against that. Baby, that's growth, I, I girl. Just, it, it is growth. <laughs> I, I just know that, you know, moving forward, when it is my turn to be a parent, I want to make sure that my kids have that space that they can, yes. feel they can come to me for that. Ooh, girl, you, you, know? you are blessing. You're going to be blessed. I just know <laughs> it. But, yeah. Oh, I love my parents down. Like, yeah, I course. love them. They, My mother, my father, that's where I got my musicality from, too. My father plays. He's a DJ. He's an artist as well. So, he plays music. And I was always around music, so I appreciated music. I always tell people that hip hop and R and B got together and created me, because <laughs> my dad is the hip hop side and my mother is the R and B. She's the one listening to Anita Baker's and Lauren Hills and Mary J. Blige's. She put me onto that side, and my dad put me onto rap and hip hop, and like all the things. So now you got hip hop and R and B coming together, and now you got. Rap, hip hop, pop, dance, house, <laughs> like all of that in me because I just love music. I just love all of it. And I know they did the best they could. Mm -hmm. They did the best they could. And I'm never going to like shit on that. Never. I just always, now processing all of my feelings as a child, I just wish I had that avenue. Mm hmm. Because I was a rainbow child, they didn't know they didn't know what, didn't to, know do. what to do. With you. They didn't have no guidebook, and I that's what made me like take steps into forgiving them and understanding them a lot more because they're human. Mm -hmm. It showed me like, wow, y'all really did not have a guidebook on how to do this, but they had the help. My mother had gay friends who were there and could have like could have told her like, girl, you know. Just love on your child the best way you can. He's going to get through this, and you're going to get through this with him. Mm -hmm. Y'all going to be a strong bond together. That's my girl. My, I love my mother so much. I really do. Like, she's my heart. Anything that, oh, and, and the history of that, anything that happens to her, I'm angry. I'm upset. I don't want to hear nothing, you know? Right. And my father, early on, it was more distant because, you know, they were just trying to figure it out, them too. And I wasn't mad at that. As long as I saw you, that's all I needed because I was getting what I wanted from both ends. I was right. getting my mother and my father. I like got my mother's nurturing, not as often as I wanted to, but you know, I was getting it. She did the best. She, she did the best. And then I was getting. Oh, my mother going. She gonna work. If anything, she gonna have a job. So <laughs> I didn't. I didn't want. I didn't want for nothing. I wasn't a child that asked for much. Like if if. I didn't really care for name brand clothes like talking about. I just wanted clothes. <laughs> and growing up to understand it, like, wow, I really didn't want for nothing. I didn't want really name brand like talking about. I didn't want, as a matter of fact, I didn't want the new gaming systems. I always got a gaming system like two and three like things behind because right. I'm just trying to experience that life first before I even move on to that. So that, and then with my father, he gave me the gift of music and to appreciate all the artists that I come across and to show them love and to know that your art is valid. Even he is, even though he says some crazy things, my God. But I appreciate both of them because of what they offer to me and what I'm able to have now. They always used to ask me, my God, they always used to ask me, when I'm going to have a grandbaby, when I'm going to get a grandbaby. <laughs> you want to know why I tell them? Y'all going to take care of them? Them kids expensive. Look. <laughs> okay, but it wasn't um, me to kind of take a jab at them. It's just because me mentally, in my mind, I'm not ready for that big of a blessing just yet. One, because I'm I'm gay. Um, I'm very gay. So how would that work out? I don't know. But um, I do know the steps to take to like do it if it comes to you know. What's, what's it called? In vitro fertilization, all of that. That's yeah. expensive. A bitch ain't got that coin right now. Yeah, you definitely would need a donor. Right. Or, you know, someone to, you know, hold. To trust them to hold the child and all of that. And it's just, I tell them, it's not that I don't want to have kids. It's just because I know what I've been through 
with y'all is that I want to make sure that in my mind, I'm mentally ready. Mm. You're never going to be ready for a child, but mentally I want to be capable to handle whatever the child throws at me. Whether if he is a rainbow child or not, because I'm able to give you the tools. Okay, baby, look, everybody ain't going to like you. Right. But as long as I love you and your father loves you, that's all that matters. And if somebody hurts you, you come to me and you let me know instantly so we can go ahead and dead that right now. Mm. So that's where I'm at. I want to be ready in the state of I want to provide emotional support for my child as well as financial. I don't want my child to suffer for nothing because struggle love is some bullshit. Oh, yeah. Like we're, we're done with the good times, love. That's that's a dead. struggle. Love is some bullshit to me. Now, I understand there was a time. That that was that, but I, I struggle love ain't never done nothing for me, ever, because I'm looking at it like this: this is a partnership. Two souls coming together to decide we want to tackle life together. If I'm bringing so much to the table to show you that I'm ready for you because I want you in my life, you should give me that same thing, or even just enough that way we can balance each other out. Because I be telling people all the time: if you treat me right. You get the best out of me. You get the very best out of me. Because I don't complain. I don't hoop and holler and scream. I'm not going to argue with you. I may play argue because I'm an Aries. I'm going to do that. I'm going to play argue. I'm going to play argue. Like, let my cousin tell you. I'm going to play argue just to just do that. Because it's just fun just to go to back and forth. Because I like, you know, improv. Just well, the, I don't. I don't like confrontation. <laughs> I'm actually the exact well, opposite. That's not confrontational. That's just a fun banter with, with one another because they know I'm playing. They know I'm like, oh, really? You want to say that? And Because and, my cousin quick tell me, don't you start your shit today. <laughs> don't you start your shit. And I'm just like, what you mean? Because she know, like, this ain't nothing serious. This is just me just, you know, shooting out something just random in my head and she feeding it back to me. Mm-hmm. Just have, Just being playful with each other. Now, real arguments. I'm not going to argue with you. I'm not even going to entertain it. I'm going to let you get your emotions out because I'm going to let you have the floor. I'm going to give you that much respect. Mm-hmm. But that's where I'm going to leave it at. And then once you come to me with a level head, we're going to talk about all this because I can't have a good relationship if I can't have no tough conversations with you. I got to have tough conversations with you and I got to be I got to make sure that you are ready for those conversations because I want to know your input. And when I know your input, I'm going to give you my input and we're going to come to a happy medium. Because we're not going to lead this conversation angry. Because I damn sure ain't. <laughs> that is something I had to learn. I'm serious because I'm... I'm definitely one of like I say, I don't like confrontation. Mm-hmm. So we we're both angry. Yeah. I'm cool with like walking away and mm-hmm. just like maybe I'll give it a day or something. Right. Uh, my husband's not that way. He's definitely like, we're going to figure this out today. I know that's before right. Before we go to sleep. Yeah. Like, we're not going to go to sleep until we come to an understanding of mm-hmm. each other. And I'm just like, man, I don't You have that. to. You but have to. He's that's right. a blessing. He's right. <laughs> you have to because if you go to bed angry, that festers within you. And right. I've learned from that. Like, going to bed with this on your mind, it's hard to sleep. Oh, yeah. It's terrible. It's terrible. It's sleep. hard to sleep. So, I'm going to tell you how I feel. I'm going to wait a minute. I'm going to be, because, you know, when my when my, my mouth gets going, it gets going. Mm-hmm. And I understand it. That's why I look and stare at them whenever they have confrontational energy with me. And I just look. And they was like, why are you, why are you staring like that? And it's like, I'm not staring. I'm not, I'm not even projecting no energy off. I'm just waiting for you to get done having the floor. So once I've composed all my emotions and all my feelings, so I can hit every key point I need to hit, I ain't got to go over no more. Cause I don't, cause the the way I look at it is, you can feel how you want to feel about whatever you want to feel. You are entitled to that. But once I tell you how I feel, and you don't put no effort into it, I done did my part. You didn't already show me you don't respect me, cause you don't, you not treating me with the same respect I gave you. I gave you honesty. I gave you truth. I gave you love. My heart. And all I asked for you to do was to be honest and give me that back. Right, and so that I just yeah. Oh man! So well, speaking of relationships, <laughs> you know, because let's before, do it. Because before we get to the kid, we gotta get to the relationship. We gotta get to the relationship, honey. Yeah. So, <laughs> what what do you think 
you're kind of like looking to find with people in these days. You know, obviously, you know, while it looks, you, you need somebody who's appealing. That's right. so one dimensional. So right. what, what are you kind of looking for? I'm looking for someone who's not afraid of me. Ooh. When I say that, and let me be very blunt with what I'm about to say. When I say I'm looking for somebody who's not afraid of me, don't be afraid to love me out loud. Don't be afraid to love me privately. Don't be afraid to love me even in our darkest moments because the love never goes away from me. Don't be afraid to tell me what's on your mind because I'm going to always listen to you. I'm going to always show you love. I'm going to always give you my open arms. I'm going to always give you the best part of me because I believe in giving the best part to somebody who deserves it. So when I say don't be afraid of me, don't be afraid of what I present to the world. My personality is very feminine, but that's because femininity is strong to me. That's where I'm comfortable at. Don't be afraid of that. Embrace that. Because we all harbor both energies. Of course, yes. Masculine and, and feminine. feminine energy, yes. But there's just something about me just being so involved in my feminine spirit that I just really love and expressive and very happy. I'm comfortable there. Everybody else ain't got to do that. But that's where I'm at. Don't be afraid of that because that's where the love is. That's where the nurturing is. That's where the peace is. Once you embrace that, you've embraced me as a whole. And now you about to reap the benefits of life because I'm about to show you what love can really do for you if you love me right. He is speaking truth right now. <laughs> <laughs> like, I joke, yes, I joke a lot, but when it comes to like stuff like this, because I've always wanted to be in love. Yeah. I've always saw myself in love with somebody who loved me back that's why where i want to be is so special to me my song my yeah. music video if anybody don't want to know i was in love at that time that's why i wrote that song you don't know what i see in you and i don't know what you see in me as long as we see each other that's where i want to be with you right here next to me i was in love with the person i'm glad i got over that <laughs> But I, but I really love the song and I wanted to really honor my inner child and put a video for it because I wanted people to see this is what I always wanted. Shout out to my co-star Brandon Emanuel. Oh my God, I love him so much. He is amazing. He's out in Austin, Texas. Hey boo, how you doing? I hope all is well. I love you. He's a photographer. He shot my second album cover. Can't wait for y'all to see that. He, he is, so, oh my God, he's so amazing. That was his first time um, doing a shoot like that. Mm -hmm. And he really appreciated the moment. He went with everything. And I told him, just go with it. Just have a good time. Whatever you give me, I'll take that. Because, you know, I'm, That's yes. That's kind of the concept of the video. Yeah. <laughs> and people were trying to figure out, what is with your obsession with black and white? What the colors? I said, well, that's the yin and yang symbolism. Mm -hmm. That's the balance. And then I also love marriage a lot. I'm obsessed with marriage. I love unions. So I wore white because that's where my feminine energy stays at. I'm the one on your arm while you holding me. I'm the one right next to you, ready to hold you up when you feel like you about to fall. I told him to wear black because the black represents strong energy to me. I'm strong already, but you represent a balance within me that holds me together too. So when we walk through life, can't nothing break us. Can't nothing split us apart. That's why I chose um, the view of it. Why I was out of space is because the sky is not the limit for me. Out of space, past that. We're mythical. We're mythical? Is that the word? Like mythical creatures? Yes. I'm I, okay. I, I'm, I'm okay. I like yes. <laughs> I'm very mythical with my expression because I believe I'm a... Um, I'm a special being. That's what I, I see as myself. I see as myself as magical. So the video basically is me showing the world that 
I'm very magical and I'm projecting that out to the world and he's receiving it and he's embracing all the magicness in me and he wants to hone that and love on it and nurture it and help it grow even brighter than before that's why you see that big sun ray pop out of my chest <laughs> like talking about because I'm experiencing all this love it's coming to me and I love that and it was a way for me to basically believe it I do deserve love everyone deserves real love yes real love and I have to say just one I also like to use I love the color black just because it also is the color of protection yes which yes I feel sometimes you know we need that protection yes everything and two, I just, I really wish everybody took marriage as seriously as you do. Ooh, girl. Like, that is such a thing. Because, I mean, I feel personally, mm -hmm. while our relationship hasn't changed in some ways, maybe in some ways it has changed since we've been married. Mm -hmm. Because the decisions you make, you truly have to make together. Yeah. And even though, you know, you know someone, you know the good, the bad, the, the ugly. Mm -hmm. It's just like, I feel like sometimes like those experiences are like tripled now because mm -hmm. you really have to care you, about this person and like yeah. their feelings and like everything you do, there is an action and a yes. consequence. So, you know, you don't ever really want to like hurt that person and, you know, if you truly have like a partnership, you're like, the decisions you make sometimes other people won't like it but it has to be it, yes that togetherness it's it's can i tell you the best the best person who showed me what real unconditional love is is my uncle my uncle bennett he's from nicaragua i love him he was the first person out the family to know that i was gay it wasn't a secret but he would get in, uh, into arguments with my aunt yeah because he would tell her, like, girl, the boy is gay, girl. Calm down. It ain't that serious. Like, <laughs> what, what you doing? Because he has gay relatives. So he grew up around. He knew. And he was just, and all he wanted to do was just love on me and welcome me. And when I tell you that brought down so many, like, walls with me, it helped me grow. That man was married to my aunt damn near 20 years. She passed on. Rest in peace, girl. I love you. It was crazy, but I love you. Even through all the bad things they went through together, he loved her so much. And when I say he loved her, he loved her. I used to tell her all the time, girl, do you know how blessed you are? People wish they had what you have. You have a man that ain't going to waver not now time about you. As crazy as you are. Cause you are but that man loved his wife still do beautiful children hard worker he has flaws yes we all do, we all do. Yeah. but the way that man loved on her and I'm sitting there like girl do you not know what a catch this man is everybody don't have this mm -mm. and I think she finally got it yes Everybody don't have that. So when you have that, you got to hold on to that. Because that's, that's a journey that I'm, I'm willing to take. It's a good journey. And it is a hard journey. But yes. I think even like the mention of unconditional love. Like, so, so funny. Last session I had, my therapy session. Mm -hmm. um, we actually went over unconditional love. It's funny mm -hmm. you brought that up. And we were talking about like, what are the characteristics of people? Like even not, not just even in a romantic sense, but just as friends, mm -hmm. what are the characteristics that as you as a person that you need to have for people in your lives? Right. So we kind of went over those characteristics for me mm -hmm. and what that was for me and what did those characteristics mean to me? And then we kind of talked about like the tears of like friendships mm, and just like yes. you know who's in that top tier mm -hmm. and why are they in those top tiers and in the second tier and the third tier and the third right tier from that point on and what it all kind of boils down that yeah, boils down boil 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 down, boils down to, to yeah I you was, was on it girl you was on it coming out that new <laughs> but you know it kind of came down to the shared experiences mm -hmm. it's kind of like that would kind of categorize people in your life 
it's those mm-hmm. experiences, what you go through, and not just what you go through, but how did you come out on the other end? Right. And what did you learn from those experiences? And that's how you kind of like figure out who deserves that category of unconditional love. Everybody, everybody ain't, ain't everybody look, everybody girl. Don't get that category. Look. Yeah. I used to I used to joke about this, but I was like, "Look, um, you love unconditional, but I got a few conditions. <laughs> I got I got a few of them, and but they weren't deal breakers. They were just more like, look, this is just something that I need to know that you can provide. You don't have to provide it. Just let me know, and I'm good. Mm. I'm cool. But he was one of the he was one of the few people that I look at for inspiration on love because he he showed me that love should really be love it should really be the ups and downs cheating is not an ups and down i don't uh, like a i don't know why people that's another story i don't get that one either, I, is, I don't know who is raising these folks I, <laughs> but <laughs> like th- they're gonna be disagreements oh, yeah. there are gonna be times where y'all won't agree with each other they're gonna be times where both y'all are gonna be off but that's the time that you really supposed to love each other the most as well. Because do you not know? I'm going to go ahead and expose my tea. So I was dating this dude who I wrote about in one of my songs. That's um, my song, Too Much. That's where that song came about. Okay. Okay. He broke up with me through a text message. Oh, no. Yeah. And before that, though, everything was good. He told me all the things that he went through. I was always praying for him, wishing him well, checking up on him, his mental health, making sure he was good. I was putting so much of an effort to let him know that I got you. You ain't got to have it all. I just want you to be present. Right. You good. I guess he didn't see life with me, and that's fine. But I'd rather him would have just sat me down and told me that to my face because I wasn't going like he thought I was going to blow up on him and that's what really hurt because I'm like you don't know you don't know me I told you when we first started talking you can just tell me anything and I'm going to tell you what's up I ain't going to holler at you I ain't going to even scream at you yeah I may be hurt but I'm going to let you know that I don't hate you I love you so much to give you that respect and he finally got it when we came back together and kind of talked everything out. And I low-key lied to him because he had <laughs> he had asked me, he had told me, I really hope that what happened between us didn't taint your view of love. And for a time, it did. It it really did. I, I lied to him and said, no, it's good. You know, I'm talking to somebody else. I wasn't. <laughs> like, and like, it was, it was just me trying to like, ease the goat yes because i did what my mother did when she was younger even though i knew she wasn't fine she would always lie to me and tell me i'm good i'm all right i'm fine no it's something that we do as people we take the pain hoping to make somebody else feel better i learned that and i had i need i really need to stop doing that when something is hurting me yes this shit hurts, hurts. <laughs> But I told him, no, I'm good. I was in, I was breaking down inside because it was really messing with me. And when we left, he asked for a hug. I joked it off. I'm like, boy, please go on somewhere. And something told me, no, come here. Just come here. Because I just really need, I wanted to feel him one last time because I knew it was a goodbye. Right. He moved on to a new relationship. They've been together for, I guess, I think two years now. Shout out to them. I hope they're doing great. I wish them all the best. When I tell you, that was the most painful time ever for me, happened to go through that, because it really made me view, like, oh my God, why isn't love happening for me like I wanted to? I'm going to be honest. I think it's because, I know we're friends, Mm -hmm. but I think it's because you are such a gentle soul. Mm -hmm. Like, even just having this conversation, you are a very gentle spirit. And I think it's you, you're going to have to have somebody who's going to be able to calmly hold that spirit because you just can't have everybody within your area. Yes. Right? So if you just have just any old person who's not in the right space for you, mm-hmm. they can really hurt your spirit. 
and I think that's what it is. <laughs> like, I'm, I'm being quite honest with you. Girl. Because, yeah, like, I need this. Yes, you know, yes. Because to be fair, like I understand exactly what you mean because you know, once upon a time, I kind of, you know, did the same thing. Like I was like, oh, everything's fine. I'm okay. Mm-hmm. And you know, it was the lies and, and I the told. Lies. And then. <laughs> You know, I and you know, and then sometimes you have to blow up like, no, I am not okay. And sometimes you need to have those moments for people to see. And, and I know it's a, you, you put yourself out there to be a bit vulnerable, which is something else that we don't like to do. We don't mm-hmm. have to be vulnerable in front of people, especially people we care about. Right. Right. So I think when you do that, it kind of allows them to see the human in you. Like, you know, I'm not perfect. Right. I'm not okay. The things you do have actions and there's consequences to those actions. Right. And you have to like see what you're doing did hurt me. Yeah. And because you hurt me. I hope that that ends with me, you don't know, hurt the next person. Which right. Which it seemed like he did not. I, it, I, I feel like he grew. And when I was talking to my little cousin, the one I spoke about earlier, mm-hmm. hey, I meant a girl. Um, <laughs> When I talked to her randomly one day, she just came to me and she told me and it, it hurt me. Like it, it, it shook me because I didn't know she was paying attention like that. Mm-hmm. She said, OK, boy, whatever. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's funny. She said, OK, I understand you want some thank you next type shit. It ain't Ariana Grande. Yeah, she want to wish them well or whatever, but I'm not. I'm just mad he used you for character development. When I tell you. Character development, y'all. When I tell you <laughs> that 21-year-old half a read me my rights. Yeah. <laughs> oh, she look good. OK. I, t- I tell her all the time. I be playing with her, but I be for real. You been here before. Because you like if you if you were to one day meet her, I hope you do. You would sit down with her. She's just like she's stone faced, but she not, she don't mean any harm by it. She just relaxed, mm-hmm. and she'll talk with you. She'll joke with you. And she'll shoot if she know you, and I'm f- cool with you. She cool with you because you bring something to me that's like beautiful, and that's all she loves. She looked at me, and it reflect. Oh my God, this is so weird, but I'm getting it. <laughs> she looked at me the way I looked at my mother. When somebody would hurt my mother, I would hate them. I would despise their, like, just seeing them, their name, everything that makes them up. I would hate them mm. because you brought some pain to something, to someone who is a, in my life, who created me, who helped me through tough times, who brought me here. When she said that to me and I looked at her and realized, wow, this is playing off in real time. She she said she wanted to run him over so bad. I said, girl, you can't drive. <laughs> she was like, she just, she has so much love for me that she don't want me hurt. And I'd be trying to tell her it's okay. And she'd be like, no, it's not. He used it for character development. You should be upset. And I'm like, but girl, that's where the music is at. She said, I know, but damn it, shit. I want to fuck up something. Like, <laughs> really? I love her. I love her. She funny, but she was just like when she said that character development piece to me I swear to God my heart broke all over again N- not for nothing bad it just broke because wow you noticed that he was able to move on and have a good relationship with this person or whatever I don't know because you know I'm not in, in his business he was able to go and move on and I was still here with the emotions that I felt when he left me Right. I was still here with these sad songs that are going to be on the next album that I had to really write and get them out so I can leave it there when I move on. And I was like, wow, girl, you were right. You sure you ain't been here before? Like, yeah. <laughs> cause it was, it, it got to me yeah. when she said that. And when she said that, that's when I knew, oh, you pay attention. And then I really started realizing she paid attention because she's one of she's one of my biggest fans. She listens to my music and she recites it word for word back to me. I played her the new single that I'm about to release soon called Water. She said, Bitch, I'm gonna need you to put that out. <laughs> <laughs> Water, um So is when does it come out? The tenth Ooh. of June. Oh, right around the corner. And it's super sexy. Ooh, I'm waiting for it. Water um was just um for a quick tip about it. Water was just my way of expressing my sensual side 
to things of a person that I would see because I was so afraid to express that. Like, I was afraid to, like, let it be known that I'm a sexual being as well. But I also like the art of lovemaking. I love a bond. Like, if I'm not mentally there, I can't do I anything. I can't do it. I can't. Oh, I get it. So I would have to feel some type of way about you to invite you to experience something with me. Because trust me, it is an experience. Yes. Right? Like. And I, like, I, I can freely talk about it now because I'm grown. I can do that. We're grown. Um, yeah. Yes. Um, when I'm intimate with somebody, that is a privilege. Because I'm sharing space with you. My body is all I have. And you want, I'm giving you comfort because you're giving me comfort in my mind. You didn't ease my mind. You didn't ease my light. You didn't make me feel so warm with you that I want to experience this rite of passage with you. Ooh, I know that's right. I did that. Because <laughs> uh, <laughs> I had felt that. Um, but when I'm very intimate with somebody, I try to tell them if I can't see it in my mind, in my brain, it's not going to happen. Mm. And see, and that's another reason why I feel you have to find that right person or mm-hmm. someone who's on that same right. energy plane as you. Because not everybody takes sex in like the art of making love that serious. Yes. You know, some people just like, I just need to go bust this real just, quick and I'm good. Yes. And I'm just like, no. And I'm like, why are you so- jackhammering my shit? Can you like calm down? Like, <laughs> can we can we get to the promised land together? That's what I call my orgasms. The promised land. Yes. Oh, I love it. This, <laughs> I brought you to the promised land. I had you feeling shit I knew nobody else can. That's what I wrote. That is so, and I'm stuck on the promise. Like, I love it when we name things. Like, yeah. before, <laughs> real talk, before before Chris Brown came out with Fine China, I always called my vagina China. I know, that's right. Like, because at the end of the day, like, you know, back when the, like, the, like the older days when people had Fine China in Ooh, their homes. You couldn't touch it. You couldn't touch that. At all. Only the finest people ate it. That was for a special occasion. I know, that's right. You know, you didn't put, you know, there was no dishwashers, but you only you <laughs> used a certain type of, you know, yes. cloth to wipe it down. It has to be special. It's special. Show. Like, can't everybody get that? If everybody get that, then you just have like, I don't know, paper, paper plates. plates but you, like, you know, not everybody. You know, can't everybody just get? Yeah. I'm so happy we named things. Yes. When Vadron, shout outs to him too, because I've been mentioning him quite a bit. Vajran I love him. He dude. is he is so fun. Um, he always joke with me about that. Cause he's like, mm-hmm, yeah, you take him to the promised land. Yeah, I'm like, shut the fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> Cause he's a good friend of mine, and I t- I tell him like we we're very close, so I tell him like damn near everything, mm-hmm. and he, vice versa. So he was like, "The Promised Land, huh?" <laughs> and yeah, that's what I name my orgasms. I name it the Promised Land because I brought you to a place, and we got there together. Mm. That's the I'm gonna Promised have to start Land. Calling it that, that now, I know cool. that's right. <laughs> Listen, husband, it, look, if you do do that, just know that it was from me. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I like, I love, I love that. Cause it like, there's only a, first of all, and to my exes, I'm going to say this because y'all managed to get something from me that a lot of people ain't never had the chance to experience. So y'all better be happy. <laughs> 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 y'all better be happy that I did what I was doing because when I was in love with you, I was the biggest freak. Okay, mm-hmm. but anyway, oh, that's my thing. If I'm if I'm like deeply in love with you, I'm the most biggest freak ever. I would. I'm a pleaser. I am as well. I get it. I'm like wow, cause and I just I love the satisfaction of knowing I'm doing this. <laughs> I did that. That's right. You better say my name. Even though I'm saying my name during sex is so freaking weird. I don't... It is so weird. You say Anthony in a sexual way. You, I don't think you can. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> can I tell you the many times I have tried to hold back laughter during sex? Now, even though that's still great. If you can laugh during sex, that's an amazing experience. <laughs> but I'm dealing with somebody and he would just say my name. I'm like... 
this ain't what I mean, there's a lot of dirty things you can say you and get away with. But and he, he, he even tried to smooth baby in it. And I'm just like, this still not doing nothing for me. What is up? Like, am I not like, am I not there? Because I know what I'm doing. I know what I'm capable of. I'm very, you know, you know, whatever. I said, baby, j- just shut up. Just shh, shh. <laughs> be, be quiet right now. Just be quiet. As a matter of fact, hold on. Okay. Y'all don't see the the way he's moving right now <laughs> to show me this story, but go ahead. I was like, oh, baby, hold on, hold on. Let me sit this up here. Okay. 94.5, V103, like R&B station. I need some music. <laughs> I need some music. I want to hear something else. Do not call my name. Don't say nothing. Now, now I feel like if I was to be involved with somebody and it just goes there, I can probably handle it due to the fact that I got the weirdness of it out the way. I'm gonna be completely honest with you. I don't know if it's like, I don't care if it's music or just TV on. Mm-hmm. I won't lie. I get so hyper focused on the act of what I'm doing. I don't even hear nothing in the background. I know that's I don't right. Hear nothing else. <laughs> I'm just focused in that moment. Like, yes. Just... Well, you talking to a music lover, so I like music just to be like existing. I love playlists. I have a sexy playlist, girl, that plays all the sexual things that I love. First of all, Potions by J-E-T-S featuring Don Richard is my favorite sexual song. Um, <laughs> also, Frequency by Don Richard. Also, Jacuzzi by Don Richard. Also, Sauce by Don Richard. Get her whole catalog. She's amazing. She's available everywhere music is sold. Um, had to get that promo in there because I got to. She makes the best sensual songs. I'm just saying, was Ooh. she got like five albums and like one EP? Like, Yo. Uh, the three EP. I'm like, <laughs> she y'all, better makes, catch, y'all better come on now. Y'all better come. Get, when I tell you, she makes the best sensual songs ever. And she, and I, and I, and I choking a little. I want my extra sauce while y'all playing. Don't skip out on the extra. <laughs> <laughs> so, give me a second. <laughs> so y'all. I'm going I'm to cut this episode right here because it's getting mighty long, but we are going to come back with a part two. Yes. We're not done talking. Uh-oh. We're not done talking. <laughs> Y'all, he wants his extra sauce and he means it. I mean it. <laughs> <All right. laughs>